At the very beginning of a research paper is the introduction section. This part of the paper introduces your topic to the reader, provides a basic foundation of literature and concepts for understanding that topic, and identifies your research questions and how they will contribute to new knowledge. The introduction section of a research paper accomplishes a few different things. First, it provides some key background information about your topic. It also states the specific objective that you seek to accomplish with the research. It also places your topic within a broader area or subfield of sociology. So the introduction section kind of situates your topic within the larger discipline of sociology, which is quite, quite large and includes many different sections. In the introduction section, you also provide a description of some foundational literature that relates to your topic. This is not a, a full literature review which comes next, but rather some of the most important uh, classic and key concepts that relate to your topic. The introduction section also identifies some of the gaps, problems, or unresolved issues that relate to your topic. And finally, at the end of an introduction section, this is where you state your research question, or sometimes this is also phrased as a study aim or objective. At the end of an introduction section, we should have accomplished a few things. First, this section should highlight the importance of a topic and why we should care about it. The introduction section is really important because it sets up the rest of a paper by clearly stating the research problem and why it should be studied. The introduction section also provides some of the logic and reasoning behind why you decided to carry out this project. The introduction moves from a very general broad topic overview to a very specific research question, which is more narrow. Now, the introduction section is not a comprehensive literature review. That will come next. That will be the next section that we'll tackle. The introduction section rather is more foundational. It provides a, a broad overview of the subfield that your topic is situated within and some of the key concepts in foundational literature. One way to think about the introduction section is you can use this kind of mental roadmap. You can think of the introduction as a, as a roadmap to answering a few basic questions. What am I studying? Why is this topic important? What, is, what do we currently know about this topic in terms of just a very brief and general summary? And lastly, how will this study advance knowledge and understanding and build on what we already know. One suggestion for how to get started is to develop an outline. I like to use reflective free writing that addresses a few key questions. One way to divvy up the content in your introduction section is to think about it in terms of roughly three paragraphs. The first paragraph of your introduction should communicate the general aspects of your topic what you are studying and why this topic is important. The second paragraph should communicate a brief and general summary of what we know about the topic based on prior sociological research and literature. The third paragraph should indicate how your study will advance knowledge and understanding of the topic and contribute to that literature. In what ways will your project fill gaps and answer questions that we don't already know the answers to? In terms of establishing the importance and relevance of your topic, and this is something you want to do in the very first paragraph, even, even really the first few sentences of your introduction, you should establish the importance of your topic. Some of the ways in which you might do this, for example, if we were studying the opioid epidemic, we might highlight the five-fold increase that has occurred in drug overdose deaths since 1999, that more than 400,000 people have died from drug overdose. If we were studying e-cigarettes, we might note that the CDC has recently declared teenage vaping as reaching epidemic proportions. Or if we were studying domestic violence, we might highlight the number of children who witness parental violence each year. If we were trying to indicate the relevance of, of our topic to sociology by relating it to broader areas of literature, let's say that we were studying adolescent suicide 
we might highlight briefly highlight theories of social integration and cultural orientations. If we were studying anti-immigrant prejudice, we might draw on theories of intergroup contact, such as the contact hypothesis. And these are a few ways and you know, examples of ways that we can establish the importance and relevance of our project topic. Now, in the second paragraph, what we want to do is describe what we currently know. We want to communicate a brief and general summary of what's known on the topic. And I would aim to identify a few studies that help to shed light on your topic. Now, because your topic might be fairly novel, you might not find research that is directly related to your topic, and that is completely okay. Instead, you might draw on important foundational research that relates to your topic or to the, or to the larger field of which it's a part. In the third paragraph of the introduction section, what we wanna do is start to drill down to identify the gaps that current research has not yet examined and state, state our research question and indicate how it's going to fill those gaps. So the, the third paragraph should start to drill down specifically on your project, away from the broader context of the literature and the subfields of sociology of which it's a part. What you wanna do in the third paragraph is narrow down from the, that broader subfield of sociology to the narrow aspects of your specific topic. Describe the research question that you aim to examine in your project and describe how that project will fill, the, fill in the gaps of what we know about your topic. How will the research findings help to build on what we already know? As a way to help get started with developing your introduction section, I would suggest a writing exercise. I would begin by developing the first paragraph by communicating the general aspects of your topic, why it's important. And you, what, the way to get started on this is to identify some research sources in a scholarly database like Google Scholar. And these sources could include general articles or academic books. And these sources, what you want them to do is highlight why your topic is important to investigate and describe how each of those sources relates to your topic. How does it help to provide context for what you're studying? Second, in the second paragraph, what you wanna do is you wanna use this space to communicate a brief and general summary of what we know about your topic based on prior sociological research and literature. What does the research tell us about your topic? Um, how does it provide a foundation for what we're gonna study? In the third paragraph, this is where you need to tell us how your project will advance what we already know in sociology and its contribution to the existing literature. How will your project help to address unanswered research questions? So take some time to look at previous research related to your topic and what new information will we learn by studying your topic that hasn't already been written about in depth? What is novel about the topic? Write down some of your ideas for what gaps your project will help to fill. What holes does your project fill within the literature? And how will your project help to build on what we already know in sociology? 